China filed a WTO complaint against the United States over what it says are discriminatory requirements for EV subsidies. Guys, why is China suing the United States at the WTO for uh, supposed discriminatory trade practices? Well, once again, for the second time today, proving that there's no rule against hypocrisy because they're complaining about exactly the same thing that they do. And so, and in fact, the EU is investigating them for doing the same thing when it comes to electric vehicles. So all the sinners are accusing each other of sinning. One of the things that I think people may have missed in the, at least the early conversation about this is, is that several people have noted, well, you know, it doesn't really matter anymore because the WTO dispute settlement system is broken. And if we lose, as we well could, and I'll get to that in a minute, if we lose, they'll, the U.S. will just again appeal into the, non the, into the void, the non-existent appellate body. The thing that people need to keep in mind, which is hypothetical, but the U.S. and the other WTO nations have committed at the 12th ministerial and then discussed this again at the 13th ministerial. They're committed to addressing that problem by the end of this year. Now, they've blown through deadlines before, so they may blow through this one as well. But one needs to keep in mind, whatever trade action is ensues from this Chinese request, it's not going to be solved till next year because any process involved takes months, if not years. So it's entirely possible that the appellate body system and the, uh, the dispute settlement system might be back up and running by the time this case comes to a conclusion, and we won't be able to appeal into the void, and we'll have to live with the consequences. Now, that said, it's going to be a while. What the Chinese did this week was make a request for consultation, which under WTO rules is the first step. And the United States can reject that request once. You know, the dispute settlement body in the, in the WTO meets monthly, usually near the end of the month. So we can reject it once, but the second time we can't reject it. So the process will start. There's a consultation period. I think it's 60 or 90 days. And if that doesn't end with a satisfactory resolution, and in this case, it certainly won't, because we're talking about something that's in law, not just something the administration can change with a presidential order, then it, China can go ahead and file a complaint. And then there's a panel, and then they'll get probably at least a year to adjudicate this. I consulted somebody who's more expert on this than I am today about this. And there's two ways to argue the Chinese complaint. They can make the complaint that the subsidies are WTO consistent, and they can argue that the subsidies are discriminatory specifically against China. And they are, because they're designed in the EV case. They're, these are, this is an argument about the tax credits that are in the, in the IRA, and particularly the electric vehicle tax credits. And they do discriminate against China because they say explicitly no Chinese materials, you know, no Chinese parts and components can be used if you want to be eligible for the tax credit. So on that point, we're on weak ground. On the larger point of whether our, the subsidies themselves are WTO illegal, I think you can make a good case that we're also on weak ground on that one. The WTO rules against export subsidies, that is a subsidy that says, We'll give you money if you export, which is not this. But also the WTO rules against import substitution subsidies are pretty good and pretty clear and pretty strong. And this is really an import substitution subsidy. It's designed to create uh, domestic supply and uh, thereby effectively preventing foreign supply. So I think you can argue, I mean, I don't think it's a slam dunk. It depends upon the arguments that are put forward and the arguments the U.S. puts forward. But, you know, it's reasonable to to expect that this is a case we might well lose. And if you ask me, if we're smart, we'll bring the same case against the Chinese and they'll lose too. And then we'll see what happens. You know, this, this is one where I think the WTO dispute is the part of the iceberg that's above the waterline. The whole iceberg is the global auto market, which because of geopolitics, at least the, the battery powered electric vehicle market, which is global as well, is splitting into China and non-China in terms of exports and domestic production. What you have at the moment is both the largest 
market for sales and production for battery powered electric vehicles is China. That's an unusual situation. But with that, with electric vehicles, you got to start thinking about China as, as the Detroit of these kinds of vehicles and manufacturers, including Japanese and, and German and American manufacturers produce in China. And they, there are some vehicles they can export from China to other countries who welcome them. There are some places where China's exports will be prohibited and there's some gray areas in between, but this is a, this is a, a, a subject where basically a global business called the global auto business, at, at least it's the battery electric share of that has to deal with the geopolitics of all the materials and the content of the car. It's complicated. It's messy because even, even electric vehicles have a lot of components. There was a manufacturer who I, I think had to, had to, re, I think Volkswagen had imported some vehicles for sale in the United States and had to cancel the sale because they contained some Chinese components that were prohibited. So it's, it's going to be complicated and messy, but the key is this is not a, an American business that China has a small share of. It's a global business where China maybe the, is the leading producer and leading trader in the, in the segment. If that's the iceberg, are you saying that auto consumers are the proverbial Titanic? But I don't know who I, I got to think about that, Debo. That's a good question. Well, I got the 9010 equivalent about what's under the water line, but I'm not sure who the ship is that's about to run into this. Well, we've had a very large railroad container, a large railroad vessel, yeah, that's like a railroad 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 container right. that's about to plow into the side of this iceberg. So I'm not sure that the analogy goes in much further. And we're getting so. into deep water here. Probably we should. Yes, definitely. 